In this video, you can watch over my shoulder as I build a landing page from scratch. And what's more, we're going to build a really stylish type of landing page where you would swear that you need Photoshop and special editing skills and stuff to make this, but we'll actually build everything directly inside Thrive Architect. Hello, I'm Shane Malach from Thrive Themes and let's get started right away with the page that we're going to edit. So click on edit with Thrive Architect and as you can see, I'm starting from a just totally blank WordPress page. Next step here is to choose a landing page and I'm going to build this from the styled blank page. Which basically means that some of the steps that I would normally do to start building a page are already done for me on this template. One thing I've already prepared that I want to show you, if I go to a color picker, what I've done is I've actually saved all of the colors that I'm going to use. So as you can see, I basically have several shades of this purple bluish. I have two shades of gray and this one highlight color. And these are basically the colors I'm going to use again and again. And there's a couple of advantages to this. So the way this works is if you use your color picker like this, you can click on this plus to add a color as a saved color. And you can then also select a color here and remove that from your saved colors again. So that's how you can manage your color palette. And the goal should be that you have a relatively small color palette, right? You don't have like 15, 20 colors here, but that you have a relatively small, tight color palette so you can reuse the same colors over and over again, and it will generally look great. This will give you consistency in the colors on your page and we'll link to a blog post below that talks more about why this is so important. So that's something I already did. I prepared my color palette right here. Next, let's set up our fonts. So I'll go to Thrive Landing Page here. You can go to the breadcrumbs or in the page settings here. Let's edit our page texts. I know that I want some things here. So for all headings, I want all headings, I think, yeah, all headings to be the same. Um, there's a font called Newton, like this, that I want to use. And uh, with the font weights, I'm actually not entirely sure. Probably 700 for bold is fine. I also want the italic version. Okay, we apply that. So right now, we've got the correct um, font applied to all headings already. Next, uh, actually, let's stick with all headings still. I want one of my specific colors to apply here. Uh, this shade here of purple and then let's do heading one I know some fonts as so I notice I want this to be larger I want this to be like 62 or so um, let's see uh, heading two I want this to be 45 is fine but this I actually want to have a different color and I will apply that and my heading three I want to be quite a bit smaller like this and the other headings I'm not going to use so I'll just ignore them then for my body text I want that to be a different font it's called Montserrat and I want it to be 300 and 600 all right so then uh, we've set our fonts I think I'm pretty happy with that so I'll close this and this gets us almost ready to go. Well, let me just duplicate this section a couple of times and then I think we're, we're good to go. To start off, let me take the first section here and let's do backgrounds. So I'll give it a solid background color to start with because I want there to be a contrasting background color before the image loads, which is my next layer here. I'll add an image and I want this background image here and I want this image to stretch, so that's good. I think the alignment is good, so I'll apply that. And then I want an overlay, and I will use, so I'll have a gradient overlay that goes basically from one of the lighter shades here to one of the dark shades, like this. Um, and I probably want to change the direction a bit. And then, of course, to make this work, um, to make the, the background image not pointless, I'll go like this. So I'm adding some transparency to the mix here. So something like this. Now we can apply the outside in editing logic here because what we can say is that in general, I want text in this section to be white. And instead of going to individual 
bits here and changing them to white. I'm going to go to the background section itself to typography and change it to white. Now, why doesn't this apply to the paragraph here? It's because I showed the color change before and so it applied an inline color here. And the more specific rule, so a rule about the element inside, will be applied. So if I insert an unstyled piece of text, you can see that it applies correctly. All right, what next? We have a heading. So let me actually get rid of the bold bit here. Uh, and so this is some excellent and highly convincing headline. It is, oops, headling. It is surprisingly difficult to talk and type at the same time. I don't know if that's just me. Um, but anyway, this is going to be our headline. And then we have, actually above this, I want a menu and the logo. And as with everything, we're going to build this, um, even the logo, without Photoshop. So we're going to keep it really simple. So how are we going to do this? Let's put columns above here. Uh, we have two columns. And there's a bit much spacing here. So let me select these columns. And on layout and position, let's get rid of this extra spacing here. It's not needed. OK. Then, OK, in one column, we have the logo text. So I'm just going to use the text logo. Um, uh, so I'll drop a paragraph in here. And I'll just go, you know, my logo. And what do we do with this? I mean, uh, we'll make this bold and let's give it a color that's different. So let's give it a, a highlight color. And then, you know, maybe add, I don't know, some decoration. And also, I think the size should be larger. So let's increase the size here. All right, so that's my logo. And then on the other side, I want the menu. And I'm, because we don't have a, a really advanced uh, menu builder yet. I'm just going to use, I'm just going to go home, space, about, blog. So I'm just going to just use text links here. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. There are other tutorials where I do this in more detail. I want to go to the container here and align the text to the left. The reason I'm doing that on the container and not on the text itself is because on responsive, on different screen sizes, I'll probably want to move it to the center, for example. And if I make an inline change, I can't change that responsively, but a container level change, I can change responsively. All right. Now, the, the other thing I want here is a video in my title section. So let's search for the video element and drop it over here. And then I insert just a YouTube video URL. What I usually do is I hide the title and I hide the related videos. And But what I want, I want this to have more space. So right now, this video is quite small. And I want it to be larger without taking away too much space from the text here. So here's a way to do that. I'm going to go to this section here and I'm going to give this section more space. So I'm going to allow the content in this section to go 100% of the width of the screen and I'm going to remove um, in layout and position I'm going to remove this padding on the side which means the video can go all the way to the edge of the screen or of the viewport and it can be much larger but of course as you can see there's now the problem is that everything is that wide and it doesn't look so great for most things so to correct for that let me just go to the columns up here so I'll select the, the entire columns and I'll make this um, restricted to 1080 and center aligned. So the columns can run no wider than that. And then I'll go here to this column. And actually what I'll do is I'll drop a content box in here. And I'll put the heading in the content box. And uh, actually we're not going to use any text in here. I'll put a button below this. So before styling this, let me just put the button in here and uh, this will be left aligned. So to align this, I'm going to put the stuff 
in here in one content box and I'm going to change the width of the content box and align it to this side. And then I can change the width until it basically lines up with this here. I could, I could use math to figure out exactly how wide this needs to be, but I'm too lazy to do that. So basically this looks about right. So now we basically have the same layout as before, but we allow the video to go all the way to the edge of the screen so it's much larger. All right, next let's style our button to make that look a bit more interesting. Let's make it larger and let's go to the button text here. We want that to be white. Also, we want to say something else like click here to get started. Also, let's um, change the size of this text and make it all caps and perhaps make it bold like this. Then we need the button itself to be wider like this and um, let's make it taller so I'll just add some top and bottom padding. Gotta add more before it affects the actual height of the button. Still more, 24, here we go. That looks better. Okay, and now we're just gonna apply my highlight color that I've already saved. Here's what we're gonna do. Um, I want this to be my highlight color, but transparent-ish. And then to make it stand out more, I'm gonna give it side borders. So we've got the borders and corners. I'll choose the left side, apply my color, and make it maybe four pixels, five pixels wide. And then same thing on the right side, five pixels, that looks neat. Next, we need a hover state. This is very simple. I like to make very simple hover states um, where I'm just gonna take the color, make it less transparent. There we go. Nice, okay, styled button, ready to go. And I think that concludes our top section here. One more thing we might want to do here is the columns, we can center align the content inside the columns so that as the video and stuff shrinks, you know, responsively, they'll always be nicely aligned with each other. So there we go. I think that's a pretty neat um, first section. One more thing I want to do is I want to lift this video off the background a bit more. And the way to do that would be a shadow, but I can't add a shadow to the video. But simple workaround, place a content box here. I'll take this content box. I will um, remove the inside padding from it. I'll just add a shadow to this. So shadow, uh, make it point straight down. Make it relatively large and then it's basically just too dark. Um, so maybe 20% is probably plenty. And I'll just drop this video inside this content box. I'll remove all um, outside margin from the video. So I remove the outside margin from the video, I remove the inside padding from the content box, and that results in basically the video having its own drop shadow. There we go. So that is our top section done. Next, let's do a kind of feature highlight section. And here we are going to build some nice icons that again will basically look like we photoshopped them but we don't have to Photoshop them. Let me add a bit more space to the top and bottom here. And actually, before we move on, so I'm gonna save this. Before we move on, let me also do some progressive um, responsive editing here. So if I go into tablet mode, let's look at what this looks like in tablet mode. That is pretty good. Here, I forgot something. Let's see, let's go to the desktop view, go to these columns, and let's add some outside padding, inside padding, I mean, to the left and right here, like this, and then actually I should compensate for this, so then it'll be 1120. Is that right? Plus padding, right? 1120 plus padding, so that when the screen shrinks, 
we'll still have a bit of room to breathe on the side right here. That was the point. And actually, I think I only added the padding on one side. So hold on, let me correct that. Because on the background section, okay, I have padding on this side. So maybe this is a better way to build that, but I'm not sure. But it basically, to correct for that the right way, what I want to do is have padding only on that side where it's missing. And then this would be 1100. Oops. I think now I got it right. Okay, tablets are now, we have equal spacing on both sides. Mobile here, let's go to, let's go to this column. And typography, at the center line, go to the other column, same thing. In this column here, the center line. There we go, it looks nicer. Here, the button is too wide, so let's just reduce the width for mobile. And then I think the spacing is a bit excessive here. And maybe we wouldn't want to flip this around actually. So if I select the video and then go into the columns that the video is inside, we can reverse the order because I think that makes more sense to lead with the video since that seems to be the main, or you know, in this layout, that would be the main content here. We only have a heading and button other than that. So we lead with the video, and then we have this. All right, so now we've got the first section built and made mobile responsive. Now let's move on to the icons I was talking about before. Here's what we'll do. Three columns. And I'll get rid of the extra spacing here. And then inside the columns, I want a content box. I'll place a content box in here. Now I'll do this several times in this build. The idea here is basically that instead of, um, basically I can apply to a column container. I can apply basically all the same styles that I can apply to a content box. However, a content box, I can drag and drop around. I can duplicate and so on. So it's a bit more flexible. So even though basically styling a content box inside a, in a column container it looks like I'm doing the same thing as I could do in a column container, but it just gives me a bit of extra, extra flexibility. All right, I'll also get rid of the extra spacing around this box. And then let's get started. We, I basically always start by putting some inside padding on a box, but in this case, I think we can put a very small amount of inside padding like this. Uh, because I'm not going to actually style the background of the box. But what I'm going to do is, well, let's start with the icon, which is going to be a content box. So I have a content box inside the content box. And this content box, I'll remove the top spacing. I will make this a specific height and width. So um, maybe 130 high, and then the width as well, 130, so that it's square. And then we'll give it a background gradient, which again, I'll use my highlight color here, going from here to here, um, except that one side is going to be transparent. And in fact, the other side is going to be somewhat transparent. I want to make this a bit lighter and like this. And then let's go to borders and corners and apply large rounding so that the whole thing is just a circle. Okay. That's our background. Now, and I'm going to place an icon below this. We'll choose an icon, maybe the leaf here, and we'll give it our color make it a bit larger and now here's the the thing about why i did this because i could just add padding around the icon give it this gradient background and make it round to get the same kind of effect but the icon is always going to be centered in its background if it's a circle 
and I want to have like an off-center look here. So the way you can look at this, actually I can see here in the breadcrumbs this is inside the column. I want it to be inside the content box. There we go. Inside this content box, I want to go to layout and position and make this absolutely positioned. Place it in the top left. I'll get rid of this spacing here. So place it in the top left. So absolute positioning means that everything else on the page will ignore this element. It will basically pretend like this element doesn't exist. And I can position this element uh, based on one of the four corners of its container. So I'm placing it in the top left of the content box that it's inside. And then from here, I'm moving it over here by just some amount so that it's kind of this overlap effect. I also want to change the color. I think this should be a darker color, maybe this. But this ends up then looking like this circle with an overlap offset icon, which again is something that you might look at and think, oh, I have to build that in, you know, I have to edit in Photoshop and upload it as an image. We can actually build this inside Thrive Architect. All right, next up we have a heading that I'm going to place here. I'm going to make it a heading three. And this is some feature subheading. And below this, I want a divider. So let's get a divider. And we'll make the divider our highlight color. We'll make it less thick. I don't know, two or three pixels, two pixels, probably fine. Um, and I'll make it quite narrow. Maybe as narrow as 40 pixels. And let's get rid of the top spacing like this. And then we have some text that goes below this. And this is just going to be some generic text. Um, to even out the spacing, I think this needs to be a bit less. All right, so there we have, I'll select the content box that this is inside now. This is basically our featured uh, column box thing. I'll duplicate this twice and then it would just be a matter of, first of all, selecting the icon and then, you know, choosing some other icon, doing the same here, choosing some other icon, and then changing the text here to match whatever features we're talking about. So there we have a feature highlight section ready to go. I'm going to save this again before we move on. All right, next here comes a really spectacular part of the layout. Let's get going. I'll use one of these sections. I think we'll need more space top and bottom. And so how do we start? We start by dropping. So actually let's do the background first. Um, okay. Background will give this a gray color, then an image on top. I'll use this one and now right away with image positioning. So here I'll choose default and I want it to be on this side here. Okay. I want it to stick to this side right? because I want this part, this screen part of the image to be in view, no matter how um, the size of the screen changes. And then we will put, so obviously we have this gap over here, but that's no problem because we'll just put a gradient over this anyway. So we put a gradient on top of this, which goes um, from our light gray to also our light gray, but it's transparent on one side. And we need another stop here, about in the middle, which is our light gray. So, so that means on, on this side here, on the left side, we can put text on it and it'll be readable, right? That's the reason for the gradient. And also we're covering up the missing part of the image on the other side. That's also pretty good. So let's put a heading in here. This is a heading two. So this is a feature slash benefit highlight section. 
And on the other side, I want an image. And here I want to show you uh, an interesting trick you can apply for images. I'm going to actually put a content box in here. I drop this next to it to create a column layout. So I have a content box here and I'm going to add my image as a background image on the content box. And then I'm going to show you why I do that. Because obviously I could just insert an image directly. But there's an advantage to doing this, which let me show you first. So I can now define the height I want this to be. And that's quite useful if you have different images and you want all of them to be the same size, you can actually make content boxes and resize the content boxes without having to crop the image. This is not necessarily the most elegant way to do it because you're loading a larger image than necessary. But sometimes for responsiveness, it can also be quite useful because so you can choose the size, but you can then also choose which corner of the image to show, right? So if the most important thing here, so let's see, it, it fills the whole, it fills the whole thing sideways. So the only thing that matters is, are we looking at the top, center, or bottom of the image? And so in some cases, maybe like the, the bottom corner of the image here is, is what you want to show. And you can make sure that no matter how it will resize, that bottom corner of the image is always going to be there. So basically, this is how you can crop images without, again, without needing Photoshop, right? We're just using a background box, a content box, and giving this so I can choose the dimensions of the image essentially and I can move the image around like this. So that's just one like trick that I think we haven't shown yet that is quite cool to do. Another thing, let's add a shadow here. Um, I'm going to make quite a similar, basically I'm going to use very similar shadow effect. I'm, I'm just eyeballing it. I'm not actually uh, being super precise about this but I'm going to use the same type of shadow here throughout. So then we have a nice, it kind of lifts off the page a little bit. It looks very cool. Next up, let's put a divider here. So this is also a thing about style consistency. I'm using the same kind of layout. I'm not sure which color to use actually. But the same kind of principle, right? We have a, a heading followed by this mini divider followed by some text. So I'm going to use the same filler text like this. All right, one more. So right away, this looks pretty cool, but we'll do some stuff to make this look a lot cooler. So the next, the next thing we're going to do is let me drop a piece of text up here. I'll make this a number one. I'll make it bold. And basically, I'll make it huge, huge-er. And one thing we can do to, to make this take up less space, because I want to put this in the background, actually. Uh, one thing we can do is basically reduce the line height so it doesn't take up that much space. Um, so here we have a number one. As a background element, we need a nice-looking number one. And this is not that nice looking. So let's switch this to Roboto and make it very bold. The background here, we've applied the light gray color to. So on the text, I want to, if I go this, it disappears. So I want to apply the slightly less light gray. And so I'll apply that. And now we are going to apply a super cool effect to this. And I'll do that by adding a content box <clears throat> above this heading and I will make this content box larger and then I will add um, a negative top margin to this so that it overlaps our text here. Basically most of our text, I made it a bit too large I think so this is probably good. Now Let's go to the background and add a gradient that goes from, so first of all, it goes this way, and then that goes from our light gray to also our light gray, but transparent. There we go. So now we've got this effect on the number where it kind of fades into the background. Then the final step is to take our heading here and um, move it up so 
also put a negative margin on it so that we have an overlap here. So now how cool does that look? Right? Now we have this, this kind of half disappearing number in the background of this section and we just got a lot of stuff going on here, right? We've got a lot of like gradients, lifted effects, overlays, layers, beautiful. Now, before we move on, my next step is to look at the responsiveness here. So on a medium sized screen, still looks pretty good. I don't think I want to change anything about that. And then on the mobile screen, for sure, we got to change some things. So the major thing we see here is that the background image here just doesn't work anymore with the gradient. But remember, we can make changes, we can make style changes that apply only on smaller screens. So I think there's a pretty elegant fix here. If I select this background section and I go to the background style, if I take the gradient, I simply want to change the direction, the other way around, the direction of the gradient to go from top to bottom. And, oh, one more thing. So, okay, the gradient is now correct because I can read the text now, right? So that's good. There's another thing we need to change because remember that we anchored the image to the right side. So now there's a gap at the bottom. That's this image here. So now let me just anchor this to the bottom or we anchored it to the left. I don't, I don't know. Anyway, we need to change this so that it sticks to the bottom of this section because that's where the image is visible. So now basically with those two moves, I think we've, we've nailed it. Um, well, another thing we could do, let me apply this. This is another advantage of using this uh, background, using the box for the image, is that maybe I want this to be smaller on mobile, but it will still show the right corner of the image that I want, right? And then one more thing, I think the bottom padding here is excessive uh, on, on a small screen like that. I think something like this would be better. But with that, I really like how this looks. This is this is very cool. All right. Um, so I think that's that's all good. Let's go back to desktop. And there we go. So this is our first section. Now let's create some more. So we want to have a, a repeating pattern of this type of featured section. So I'll select this and duplicate it. And so how do we modify this? So we'll do a zigzag effect. First of all, this is the simplest change. I'll change this to a two. There we go. And then I want to get the columns that this is that these are inside and I want to flip them around. Then we need to do, uh, we need to flip around this background gradient as well. So we go to the background style, select our gradient and we turn that around like this and it's basically similar to the changes we had to make mobile right we need to um, anchor this image to a different side also I want this to be a different image so we have another featured section image this one here and we have another image here as well benefits image this one and I want to show off that top left corner here. And one more thing is this space here. This looks a bit cramped. Looked good here, doesn't look good here. So what I'll do is I will just add a margin to the side here, just to give this a bit of space. Then let's look, so that was pre pretty quick, right? Pretty quick, we got the second section here. Let's look at the responsiveness of this as well. Once again, tablet looks good. Let's look at the smaller size. So here, I think, let's see, the one thing I definitely want to do for this layout, here we have text, then image. So I want the same here. So I select the columns and I flip them again so that we have text, image, text, image, right? That looks better, okay? And I think that's all. It seems like uh, maybe I can remove this side margin again. And that's all. It seems like we've already made this responsive. Uh, that's the power of copying. So the process here, I'll just do this once more. And I copied the top one because for the zigzag effect, I want the same layout as the top one again. 
But that's the power of basically setting up a section, doing all your edits and um, making sure that it's responsive and then duplicating. That really saves a lot of, uh, that saves many steps compared to duplicating first and then looking at responsiveness. So here we have a number, oops, number three. And once again, we basically just have a different background image here and I'll also change up the text and all that, but um, I think we can leave that as it is. I'm not sure what's our third image here. This is the background image. And we have a new um, feature image here or screenshot or something like that, right? There we go. So that is our super Photoshop-y section, right? That's, that's a ton of special effects basically all built directly in Thrive Architect. All right, so with that, let's move on to another design section. Uh, let me duplicate this background section again a couple of times. Now I wanna do a testimonial section. So let's start with columns and I'll do a one third, two third column. And okay, on the one side, I'll have a heading that says customer stories and I'll make that a heading three although I think I want it to be larger here so font size let's maybe like this um, okay we have this then we've got over here I want a content box so I put a content box inside the column same kind of logic it just gives me more flexibility uh, to work with different layouts and things. I want a gradient that goes from a lighter blue purple to a darker one. And layout wise, I'm going to do something similar that we did at the top section. So on this background section, I'm going to go to layout and position. Or actually, first, I'm going to make this cover the entire screen. And then I'm going to get rid of the side padding because I want that I want this content box to to be allowed to go all the way to the side of the screen basically. Then inside this box and so first here I'm going to do the same kind of correcting. So to correct for this, what I can do is I'll choose the text because I don't want the text to stick all the way uh, on the side. So the text. I'll put in a narrower container, put it over here, maybe even make this break on two lines like this. Okay, um, next in here is where I'm going to put my testimonials. And once again, I'm, you'll see that I use the same moves over and over again. I put columns in here, I get rid of the extra space. In most cases, I don't want this. And then I put a content box in my first column. I style this and then I'll copy it over to the others. Um, so in here, content box, give it inside padding. The rule of thumb here is that if your content box has a background, a styled background, there should be inside padding. Go to borders and corners, add some rounding here. And this is what will turn into a testimonial. So I'll drop an image in here um, of a person. I don't need, so first of all here, let's add large border radius to make it round. And then I don't need the top space. So this is our person. Then we have basically we have two text elements. One will be Jane Doe, um, you know, CEO of the company. And the other will basically be filler text like this. So that would be our actual testimonial text. But there's a couple of things we can do here. First of all, I want to reduce the text size in here, generally, um, maybe to 16. On this line of text, I want to change the color. And I can also change an individual word here. I could even change the font um, to our Newton font. Although then I, I think I have to make it larger again, like this. 
Okay, and roughly something like this is our testimonial, right? And what I can do then, so if I duplicate this, one thing I'm seeing here is I will expect that these testimonials, I'm putting three next to each other, I'll expect that they will stack on smaller screens. As you can see, there's quite a lot of space here. So what I want to do is if I look at my columns, the gutter width, the space in between columns is 15 pixels. So what I'll do is on my content box, I'll go to layout and position. I'll make zero at the top and 15 at the bottom. And that means that when they stack, the space here will be the same as the space here. So there we go. I just duplicate, drop, duplicate, drop. These are our three testimonials. And that looks okay-ish, but of course we need to move this around a bit on the background. So let's go to the containing content box with our gradient background and add some spacing here at the top, some at the bottom. I want more at the bottom. Also inside padding, I want inside padding over there. But on the columns themselves, I'm going to choose the columns themselves. I want to give negative margin here to create an overlap, which looks cool, except that I can't see the border. So let me select this box and give it a shadow. Let's go here, give it a shadow. And again, basically I'm going to use the same kind of shadow I've used before. There we go. So now we see this border, but of course only this box has a shadow now. So what I'll do is I'll just quickly redo my copy pasting of this, right? Or my duplicate and drop rather. There we go. So now all of them have the same shadow. Okay. So that's, and we have this overlap effect, which looks quite nice. So there we go. Now the next element I'm going to add is I'm going to add another one of these, um, an element like this number here. So let me, duplicate the number and drop it here. But instead of a number, I want quotes, open quotes. And okay, first of all, we need to style these. So these open quotes are not particularly nice looking. We can check our other fonts. So we're using Montserrat. I don't want to load too many custom fonts here. So we can check Montserrat. That looks quite nice actually. Maybe use this. Another thing we can do, so if if the if you want to have an element like this and it doesn't look nice in the fonts you're already using on the page and you don't want to load more scripts, you can try web safe fonts, right? We can have a look at like the Georgia um, quotes are quite nice. Basically look around like this. It's quite a nice style as well. So because these, the web safe fonts you can load and it won't add any extra scripts to your page won't slow it down, right? Because other than with the Google fonts, they're great, they look nice, but the more of them you load, the slower the page will be. And it's fine to load two or three different Google fonts, but you don't want to be loading four or five or six. So, okay, we, we have me, we have these quotation marks here. And I'm also going to copy this box with our gradient overlay effect and put it here. Um, the difference is that now the background is white. So, on our gradient, we're going to change this to be white on both ends of the gradient and transparent at the top. And it also doesn't need to be this tall, something like this is fine. But then also we need to move the whole thing down. So I think the way to do that is just to add, yeah, to just go like this. And then perhaps on this column, we also want to add some inside padding like this. So now on a wide screen, it looks, it looks pretty decent here. If you see, if I select this, it overlaps here, but I think the order of uh, layers is correct here. If you ever need to correct for something like this, right? If this is what it looks like, even if you click outside of it, always remember that you can go into advanced and use Z index which is the order of elements um, from, let's say, the screen towards your face. And so the higher the number, the closer to your face it is. So if you want to make sure that this box is above this one, you give it a higher Z index. And that's how you can correct for things like this. 
All right, but in general, while you're editing, when you select something, it will always move to the front so it's easier to edit. And then when you click out of it, you'll see the actual order of things again. Anyway, here we have our testimonial section. Let me save this. I think that looks quite nice. The next step here is once again, mobile. So tablet, I like it. I think this, there's nothing I would change here. This looks great. Um, and phone. Ah, here we have to make some corrections. So this looks fine. Uh, here the alignment is actually, it's pretty much centered. So I'm not going to fiddle with that. Let's look at this uh, on the background section. Let's get rid of the side padding so that the blue goes all across the screen. And then on our columns here, the overlap to the left doesn't make any sense anymore. So we're going to get rid of that. And instead we have 20 pixels here. We're going to add that on the other side as well. So now it's nice and centered. And then the only other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce this a bit, uh, especially at the bottom. I think there's too much space here. So reduce that. So this is what it'll look like on a phone. Looks good. All right, back to desktop. Next up, we have a call to action section. So let's go in here. We are going to, so right away, I can tell you, we'll need more space at the top here for sure. And I'll start with a background image. Now this is going to be, the content here is going to be inside a content box, which is why I'm not putting a solid layer of color behind it. I mean, it doesn't really matter, but just my logic is that if there's text on top of something on top of a background image, I want to have a solid color behind that. So the text is readable before the image loads so that someone on a slow connection will still be able to read the text, even if the, um, image hasn't loaded yet. Here, we'll put an overlay on this image. We'll use light gray. I think we'll just use light gray on both sides and make it more transparent on, on one side than on the other. So there you go. I'm just eyeballing this. It, you know, this is basically whatever you like the look of. Go with whatever you like the look of. Um, then I'm going to put a content box in here. This is where our content will go. So I'll start with inside padding. And then, so my thinking is always if text or content is going to go in a box, I want there to be space between the edge of the box and the content inside it. And that's what inside padding is for. Then I want a background gradient that is basically the same as uh, the box above. So that goes from light to dark blue at a not quite straight angle like this. Also, so I'm going to put text and a button in here and right away I can tell you, I definitely want the text in here to be white because dark isn't going to be readable. So that's the outside in thinking instead of applying white to each piece of text, I'm just going to say everything in here is white by default. And also I want stuff in here to be center aligned. Now I'm going to add the text itself. So we have a heading. So this is our awesome call to action box. And we are going to have another paragraph here, which is just whatever text. Then I want a button in here. And here's what I do. I want the same button here, the same style. A couple of things we can do. We can save this as a template by going here and then load it from our button. Uh, so in the button menu, you, you'll make it available as a style here. Or in this case, I will want the same action to happen on both buttons. So let's say maybe I link this to a light box that opens up. I would apply that action first and then copy the button because then the new button I've just duplicated will have the same action associated with it. So that's, I just, you know, it's basically just lazy. I'll just save one, one step in the process. I want this to be center aligned and I'll remove the bottom margin. I think hmm. I just want it to be about even, right? Okay. Then let's look at responsive again. Actually, no, let's do some, let's do some effects first. 
I want to have some overlay effects going on. Uh, let me select the section at the top and reduce the padding to one. Then select these columns and re remove the extra. Actually, no, at the top we can we can leave it. Hold on. At the top, that was fine. But at the bottom, I don't want the extra space. And then on this box, I want an overlap effect. So I'm going to push this down like this. So here we have this overlap effect. I'm going to add more space here to compensate for that a bit. OK, that looks pretty cool. And I want to have another overlap effect here. So I'll, get, I'll remove the bottom padding here and push this down like this as well. And then I'll add space to the bo to top here to compensate for that. So this is um, a nice way to make a page look more pro and give it more depth. It's just like these, these types of overlap effects uh, together with the shadows gives this layered impression. And that's one of the things that makes this a page that looks like probably custom images were uploaded or something, even though they weren't. So now that I've done these effects, now I'm going to have a look at the responsiveness. Um, because on responsive, I want to make sure that that still looks good here. We're fine. Uh, and then mobile. Here, ah, we have a couple of issues. So this is still fine. I'm not going to correct that. But here, I'm going to reduce the inside padding because I don't want that to be too cramped. And then our button is too wide. And I think I can just reduce the width. And that's fine. I could also reduce the text size, but I don't think that's necessary. It's okay if it runs on two lines here. Um, so that's, that's our button. Okay, so this is done. These two sections are done. Then let's have one final text section down here with one more like special thing we'll build. So drop this in here. We have a heading and this is this is our final text section. Let's make this heading three. And uh, we'll have some more text here. And actually, so well, also, so here I didn't do the outside in thing, but we'll also center line this. And another thing we can do here, uh, let's grab one of these dividers again and repeat this kind of pattern of a divider after a heading, except that we want it to be center aligned. Okay, that looks nice. And now let's build some social buttons. So some buttons that would link to our social media profiles. I want three of the buttons. So I have three columns here. Then I'm going to reduce the width to something like this and center align. And then we can build these. We can basically just use the icon element. Let's drop this in here and let's start with Facebook. This is our icon. Let's make it smaller. And let's give it um, our, well, one of our default colors, basically. And then put space around it, padding around it, and give it a background. And our background is going to be a gradient, which, again, if you're, you're probably noticing that I'm basically using the same moves again and again, right? I'm giving things the same kind of look. Um, the same kind of gradients with the same colors and so on. And that's what creates visual consistency, which is one of the things we want. Uh, so here, I'll, make, I'll give this a fading effect like this. I think that looks nice. And borders and corners make it uh, just large enough for it to be a complete circle. There we go. Here on an icon, you go to animation and action and add a link action to link this to your social page. Now the next thing is, before I duplicate this, I want to add a hover effect. In general, if something's clickable, I want it to have a hover effect. Here we can switch this to our highlight color on hover. And that looks pretty nice. Then, well, now it's just duplicate. Um, actually, there's probably too much space. These will probably also stack. So let's 
kind of do the same trick we did before, right? We have uh, we have the icon here in layout and position. Okay, it's 20. Um, let's go like this, zero. I'll recenter it here. And I don't know, maybe 10 at the bottom. And now I duplicate it. So when they stack, it'll look like this. I like that better. So put this here, put this here, and then we just change out the icons. So what do we have? Twitter and LinkedIn. There we go. So now we've got our icons. I want them to be closer together though. Now that I've built them, right, I can see that my eyeball uh, distance here wasn't ideal. So I'm just, I can just kind of change the spread like this, right? Uh, so I'll go, I don't know, like this. Looks good. All right. Um, maybe add a bit more space at the bottom. And then, well, the final thing is just, we have a footer bar here. What are we going to do here? I mean, we can um, add a background color and make it white, make the text inside here white. And then we'd want to fiddle with the spacing. So to make that look better, um, probably remove this. Something like this, or maybe, hold on, maybe 0 and 20. Anyway, that's not that interesting, right? But we'd have a footer bar at the bottom, and that is basically our page built. Let's do a final check um, of responsive. Let's check the whole thing, right? Okay, tablet. That looks good. This here, mm, here are these columns. Let's, let's look at these columns. I think on a medium screen, they might as well still be next to each other. So here you can define if you wrap the columns, um, or we can also just say don't don't wrap the columns. Or when you wrap the columns, you can define like how narrow can a column get before we start stacking. That's what this is about. So the, the larger this amount, the, the more they will stack or the sooner they will stack. But we can also just say, look, on a screen this size, just keep them like this. And I think that, that works quite well here. So that's what I do here. This looks good, looks good, looks good. This we've already looked at. I think it looks actually great. Um, this looks good. These are, they shouldn't be wrapping yet. That's That makes more sense. And then let's go back to the top, switch to phone. And that looks nice, that looks good. Um, yeah, all looks good. Our final section here is fine as well. And that's it. We are done. So that is our no Photoshop build of a really advanced styling landing page. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope watching me build a page like this, I try to think out loud. I try to explain, you know, why I do things and why I do things in the order I do them. I hope this is useful for you. I hope you know, you can learn some tricks on how to use Thrive Architect more effectively. So the only tools used to make this are WordPress and the Thrive Architect plugin. If you have any questions about this, if you'd like to see more videos like this or any other feedback or comments are always welcome. So please leave a comment below. I'm Shane Malach from Thrive Themes. Thank you for watching.